It's February and there's no better time to paint a snow scene. And I am going to start with the snow. And it's late in the season, so there's a little bit of patches of earth showing up under the snow. So I've used a light red and also called English red to indicate this and in the foreground and I'm going to use some raw sienna to indicate this in the background. And this technique is called dry brush. I am then going to work on the sky. And the reason I start with the earth rather than the sky, as is usually my case, is that it's really easy to mess up that dry brush. So I don't want to do a beautiful sky and then have to throw out the whole thing because the dry brush didn't work. So there's my honest reason for proceeding this way. So I put in some water and I am going to add a bit of permanent rose and then some cobalt blue. And I'm also going to put some of that light red which is going to gray out the sky a bit, which is fine on a cold winter day. I'm indicating the horizon here because eventually I'm going to put trees there. I like variety in the sky. It's oh, here's some ultramarine blue. It might seem a bit dark, but watercolor dries lighter. I'm gonna um, pick out some of the color from the horizon because I want that to be lighter so that the trees will show up. I'm also bringing some of the shadow color here. Now for the trees I am going to use a color that I really like and that is called Blue Appetite Genuine. And it's a Daniel Smith watercolor. And because of its composition, I believe it's a natural pigment from ground stones, it granulates really nicely. And I would like these trees to do interesting things as they mingle with the pigment that's already there. So I've actually added a couple of drops of granulating fluid to my palette, to this color kind of encourage this. Now for these other more distant trees I'm going to use Payne's Gray just to give some change, some variety. And I'm going to make them less, just a different shape. I'm going to drop a little bit of ultramarine blue 
in this distant trees again for variety and a little bit of that light red that I used for the patches of grass peeking through the snow. Going back to these forward trees, I'm adding a tiny bit of deep sap green towards the bottom. Again, I just want to show that there's a difference between these trees that are closer to us and the more distant ones. We're assuming these front ones are evergreens and the back ones aren't. And a tiny bit more intensity here. I just keep adding. This technique is called charging. When you add more color to a color that's already there. So this part is called dry brush. This is wet on wet. And what I'm doing now is charging. I don't want these trees to just finish, so I'm kind of melting them with this background snow. And I'm going to let this dry. If all goes well, this painting will be done in just a couple more goes. I'm going to use a mixture of the light red and that blue appetite genuine to paint the fence posts which can barely be seen but it doesn't really matter because they don't have to be precise And yet they can add so much to a painting, really. Something as simple as fence posts. I guess they indicate human presence. They indicate a certain claiming of space, which we may object to because it may not be our space. But we respond to that, I think, visually. I'm not even trying to make them even. is around the bottom of the fence. And I'm going to soften some of the I'm going to give more dimension to the fence by using a darker mixture. I just, I'm using the same as for the fence, but I just added some Payne's Gray. <clears throat> 
and to this I'm adding more of that um, light red for some grasses. And I'm doing this mostly because I don't really like there's too much red in the background and I just want to break it up a bit. This red. And here's my little simple landscape. 